In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into Adobe Captivate's drag and drop functionality. Okay, so I got a message from Double F who said, uh, thank you, Paul, for your dedication to helping the Captivate user community. You have no idea how many times you saved me with uh, your examples. Forgive me, but I have a question that I have not been able to solve. How can I use the same drag object to be used in multiple different drop locations? I would like the drag object to remain shown on screen even after it's been dropped so the learner can redrag it again and reuse it for another drop location. Hope this makes sense. Many thanks. So today I'm going to attempt to show you a bit of a deeper dive into the drag and drop functionality. There are some things within Adobe Captivate um, and this particular interaction that not many people know. And we'll show you a more advanced way to set up your drag and drop interactions that maybe the three step uh, drag and drop wizard doesn't really cover for you. Let's get started. So what I did is I found uh, six ingredients that you know are common to many of the things that you might make over here. Now, normally what we do is we go into the interactions drop down and we go drag and drop and we follow this very simple three step process where we first of all select our drag sources, which I'm doing right here and then clicking next. And now we're going to select, of course, it's created a submit button. I'm just going to put that in the center. Uh, next, we're going to select our drop targets. This is the normal process that most people go through. And then on the third step, we match the correct answers, the uh, reciprocal answers to where they need to go. I'm going to cancel this because I'm, I want to show you that there's another way that might be a little bit more versatile for this sort of situation. So let's click on the plus icon next to the drag and drop panel. If it's not open already, click on your window drop down and just simply select it down here so it's one of the available panels for you to use. So I'm going to click on the plus icon here and it's going to add a submit button to my slide. I have my alignment toolbar here so I can just make sure it's centered like that. This is really kind of simple. We'll start off with our ingredients over here. We'll select all of those. It will jump over to properties, but just click on drag and drop again. And we're going to mark all of these as drag sources. Okay, that's taken care of that. Next, we're going to select all of our drop targets. Once again, click on the drag and drop panel and mark these as drop targets. Now, a few things come up. Now, if we're, we're on the options tab, there, here's where we can select redrag the drop source. So what this does or what this allows your learners to do, if I drag, for example, all purpose flour over to milkshake erroneously, I can then pick it up from milkshake and move it over to pancakes or souffle, whatever is appropriate in this case here. Now, normally, even if you're familiar with this method of creating a drag and drop, a lot of times what people do is simply drag these little um, pointers over to the object and that will get you your correct or incorrect uh, feedback items, which you can place here. But there may be more than one answer to this question, right? So if I'm trying to make pancakes, I'm going to drag all of these items over except ice cream over to pancakes. I guess you could put a scoop on top, but that's not what we're doing here. But souffle actually uses the same five ingredients. Uh, so those answers will be the same. So if I drag all five of these to pancakes, I want that to be a correct answer. If I drag these five items over to souffle, I want that to be a correct answer. If I drag milk and ice cream over to milkshake, I want that to be a correct answer. So let me show you how that's done. We'll go into set correct answers. And uh, I already did one here. So let's just get rid of that. So we're starting from scratch here. So I'm going to select my first drop target here. Let's start with milkshake drop. And of course, labeling these objects really helps because then it's easy to see exactly what we're doing here. So for milkshake drop, 
Uh, we'll also do that and we will add, and I can just type and select enter. So now I have a correct answer for the first part of this drag and draw. Next, I'm going to add a new answer, right? Many of you might have missed that that's a capability right here. And I can go in and now we can talk about the souffle drop. And what do we need for that? Well, we need milk and souffle drop, sugar, and eggs. Oops, souffle drop, got to select that first. Eggs. And if I need more answers, I just click the plus icon up here. And let's see what I'm missing here. Flour. And we'll add another answer. And butter. Okay. Now, there's, again, there's a third possibility of a correct answer. So we're going to add a new answer here. And in this case here, we're going to be working with pancakes. So let's make sure that we get all the ingredients for pancakes. They're the same for souffle. So again, don't question my ability to make pancakes or souffles. Uh, these are just general recipes, not very specific ones. So we need milk for pancakes pancakes, sugar, let's keep going, egg, need more answers here, let's put a few in, um, pancake, flour, and lastly we need some butter for our pancakes. Okay, so as you can see, there are three different sets of combinations that would be marked as correct answers. And of course, you'd have to phrase a question here like, you know, dra drag all the ingredients to make one of the three uh, possible recipes on this screen here. So success could be Congratulations, you found a recipe. And failure could be, that's not right, or something to that effect. Now, you can customize this uh, drag and drop further. Uh, with our drop targets, uh, what we can do is uh, go to formatting. And rather than having them all pile up in the middle, I think what might be appropriate is to tile these guys starting from the bottom left corner. Also too, these are kind of large. So let's shrink them in size when we drop them into our drop target there. And as far as the drag and drop is concerned, let's give them infinite attempts to find one of those, um, one of those items. We'll have a reset all function when they hit submit. So if they don't get the right answer, everything will go back to normal. You can even set up auto submit correct answers if you wish. That way you could actually drag your submit button into the scrap area and just have people move stuff around until they find a recipe. And of course, like all drag and drops, this can be included in the quiz. Uh, the disadvantage of including it in the quiz, obviously the advantage is that you can score people. The disadvantage is, is that returning to the slide won't reset it, so learners won't be able to try again later if they get it wrong. But let's leave it off for now, just as a knowledge check here. Let's preview this in HTML5. So here we go. So here's our, uh, let's start off with making a milkshake. So ice cream and milk and I got auto submit. So congratulations, you found a recipe. So I would be considered correct in that. If I wanted to do, let's say pancakes, I could do that. And again, so there's more than one correct answer here. 
um, you know, we would drag in all the items that make up that. So that's a correct answer. A completely different set of uh, drag and drops is actually a correct answer. Similarly, we can make our souffle over here with those same ingredients and also be marked as a correct answer uh, when I find those combinations. So hopefully that expands your capability of doing a drag and drop. Oh, one last thing. One last thing, let me just illustrate that you can drag ice cream to pancakes, but if you change your mind, you can move it up to milkshake or souffle, whatever the case may be. Uh, in this case, we'll leave it in milkshake there and we'll put the rest of our ingredients in pancakes and we should get one correct answer uh, for that. We can just submit that. It doesn't like that because I've left ice cream all by itself in milkshake there, but uh, let's find one recipe by just dragging in those. And there we go. We're good to go with our pancake recipe. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.